Hi guys, Mr. Johnny here. Remember this? Mm, I think you do. And guess what? It's right again. It did not last long. It's only because of this beautiful connector, which you can plug in the right way. And it goes in smoothly and rather easy. But you can also plug it the wrong way. It kind of doesn't want to, but you can, if you want, plug it in something like this. It does not go really in all that great. It doesn't want to go all the way, but it goes in there deep enough to make contact and fry the chip, which is exactly what it did. And I told the client to line up this piece. If you can see this kind of thing of a bob with this side, then it goes in smoothly. Like this. But no. When I when I took it apart again, I saw this. This fell out, should I say, which is um, belongings of a diode. Pop the cover off and holy. I, there is no way I'm gonna edit that out. Whatever. <laughs> I'm too lazy to run the software. <laughs> ah, bloody idiot. Here's the amplifier board that I've put in. I do not have the chip to replace it and I asked him how many speakers does he use? He said one. I said, well, I can replace the chip in here, in this board that I've put, that will cost you more and uh, that will cost you that amount, plus you will have to wait like more than a week because it tends to, the company that I buy components from tends to take, the, take their time and, and do not rush at all. So. But uh, I also said to him, if you use one speaker, I can make an amp another amplifier. It will cost you that amount. He said yes. So whatever. Unfortunately, this board is going to be in the par parts box until I, I will. On the next purchase, I'm going to make, I'm going to include that chip amplifier. I'm going to put it there. So the board will be fine. It ain't going to be tossed away. And what I'm gonna use for the single channel amplifier this little board which is gonna be based on TDA 2030 you can see the board is very small and mirror like finish see and that's thanks to the fact that I did broke the bank that I did break the bank and uh, bought this stinky solution and uh, I'm talking literally here it's a liquid tin 2.0 I mean like liquid tin version 2.0 I'm not sure what what's the deal about there it's a solution for chemical tinning it stinks of rotten eggs, so it's got to be hydrogen sulfide. Not funny, not funny. But the awesome thing is, this thing works so fast, it is stupid. I just went, use this little container here, a cup, whatever you like to call this thing, dropped it there when it was copper colored. I poured it in, and by the time I, like this, poured it in and by the time I put the cup on the bench the thing was already tinned basically the, it did its job the moment it touched it it is so fast it's ridiculous 
it does put a very light coat of tin though so you can go take something abrasive and rub it off like this kind of eraser it will easily rub it off especially this dark side dark side <laughs> evil but you know you don't need a huge coat you just need to protect the copper from oxidizing and it does that awfully well on the side note uh, remember I talked about that my printer is on its last legs and does not print out all that well I'm gonna give you a close-up how the board looks like and you will see that the chemical tinning with this solution does not hide all the imperfections in the board like uh, manual tinning with a soldering iron does so I will have to edit it out because file corrupted for no reason yeah for no reason because Johnny is a dumbass And hopefully see it. See some lines there. It's not perfect at all, but considering the effort I've put into making it, that's a great output. Let me make sure that the phone ain't gonna flip over <laughs> again, because that's gonna be tragedy. Last thing I want is to break the <laughs> freaking screen. So yeah, I'm gonna populate this board, put it in and that's that. Also, you saw the procedure in another video and if I'm gonna take a look at this resistor, which is not a zero ohm link but something on the right, it looks like it's broken. Let me get in closer. Maybe you'll be able to see that that thing looks like it's broken. No, it's surprisingly good actually. You can see it indeed. It is physically broken, the ceramic. Take a power supply. Uh, let's just make sure the phone ain't gonna fall because, again, that's gonna be tragedy. I have my power supply. I set it to 5 volts or whatever the output voltage of that regulator is negative to ground positive to the output of the regulator which is the rightmost pin come on and we see something there the funky flickering is a multiplexing you do not see that with your own eyes kind of a nice effect actually and you can also test the voltage regulator by putting the input, the positive from your supply on the input and putting a multimeter on the output of the regulator and slowly bringing the voltage up, seeing will it cap off at, our, at 5 volts in this case. I tested it and it does. So what I need to do is I need to replace that 4.7 ohm resistor, probably with a jumper link and to prevent any, any more tragedies I'm gonna go and whack a shotgun diode in series with the po supply positive supply so there is no way it could be blown again hopefully of course it can be blown with a output shorted to ground or to positive rail for that matter it's gonna be decoupled through a capacitor since it is a single supply amplifier but it is gonna be safe for DC shorts but whenever the amplifier is driving something it has some AC on the output and capacitor of that size 470 microfarads is pretty much a short circuit for AC of audio frequency okay the board is somewhat assembled some components are put in sloppily like this capacitance, this resistor, because I need to tweak them. This to determine the gain. You can see that 
the board is pretty damn compact. Chip is sitting there. It's looking hunky dory. Very compact. It is um, 30 millimeters by 25 millimeters. So like a little bit more than an inch and an inch this way. <laughs> Not big at all. Now you can definitely see that right from here the magic smoke has escaped and although they say these are solid state devices they are not really because every proper engineer knows that they work on magic smoke transistors resistors psh, it's all just a conspiracy they work on magic smoke and if you have a track here there ain't more a hermetic seal with to hold to hold the magic smoke inside and that goes the integrated circuit so guys i did some work to it and here you see the board with all components soldering nicely now you can see that i changed the resistor to 4.7k previously it was 2.2k this will allow more signal to come to the inverting input of the amplifier thus the gain will be decreased i can actually go and decrease the gain even further but i'm gonna leave it here it will be all right or maybe i will change it i'm not sure yet there are some holes which ain't gonna be used like this one that's a signal ground that's obviously the signal where you see the jumper link there there should be another capacitor like this input capacitor but that does not make sense because there are ac coupling caps on the board those little 0603 ceramic chip capacitors this scene is um, a little it's a hack really it's a shutdown. TDA2030 does not have a shutdown. The way I implemented the shutdown here is I just go and ground inver non-inverting input of the amplifier. I connect that node to ground and by doing that I short out the um, basically signal so there will be nothing. Uh, no signal to the input of the amplifier and that also has an additional feature that it kind of messes up the bias of the amplifier and instead of drawing to about 30 milliamps of quiescent current uh, when I pull this node to ground inverting input the consumption goes down to about 10 milliamps still quite high 10 milliamps plus some stuff consumed here so that will be like 50 or so milliamps quite a lot actually so I I did say to the chap that uh, you I do not recommend to leave this on to for a long periods of time it depends on your battery it may go dead if it's a weak battery and another hole which is not used is just another ground it's a speaker ground but I will use a ground plane for that it will be all right what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just go clean up the flux here there are not many but we will still do that just a little q-tip and acetone and that will be taken care of you can actually see that this time I did not skimp because you see the protection divot there and you can see a little RC so-called Zobel network it is really just an RC snubber to make sure that the chip does not oscillate and it does not do that which is nice so the procedure is very straightforward heating compound bolted to the case and no this capacitor is not in the way because the screw is gonna be like this the nut will be on the inside so this capacitor does not interfere with this it will still allow me to tighten the screw just fine another thing i'm gonna show you 
is uh, let me get rid of this connector you can see I did some bodginess here here let me get something to point with uh, that will do you can, where is the focus right here you can see a link between this pad and this pad those were the inputs of the stereo amplifier that was here I connected them together normally you do not want to do that because that will just short out both channels of the, your source which is not nice but here you can see a resistor capacitor that's your input coupling capacitor that's your resistor in series and same applies to the other channel capacitor and a resistor so there are resistors on board so but I can safely do short this together and it'll be fine another way another thing that see this little transistor its collector which is this lead is connected to this point which I also went and well in th at this moment it is snapped open because I was testing it um, basically this is connected to the input as you can see of the amplifier and since there is no AC coupling cap here this is DC coupled to the inver to the non-inverting input and when this transistor turns on and that happens when the scene is switched off or the mute is activated the amplifier will be shut off so that's that it is broken open because I had some problems caused by the resistor which was located right there where you can see the open spot right now <coughs> that resi transistor that resistor which was here caused problems because it was connected to the collector here this pad to the collector this pad to the positive supply from your battery and that was skewing up the bias of the chip and uh, another thing that I did I just went and desoldered the broken resistor moved the zero ohm link from here to here and I installed the diode in series yes that will drop some voltage and uh, you will have some power loss and you won't re and the chip amplifier won't receive the maximum input voltage to get the maximum output power but you know what it does not matter here the chap uses a single speaker and it's not very powerful one he just wants something just wants some something to babble along while he spends the work day in the truck okay so here were you can see two footprints for the output capacitors that were used with this chip now I only use one channel this which I chose for a reason because if you see on the other track here it is it goes to this not to this and why not to this well because in the event when he gonna swap it around again the positive won't be applied to this which will reverse bias the output capacitor on this board so right now as is with this modification everything should be bulletproof pretty much the only thing that should kill it is a uh, AC short to ground or to the positive rail for that matter which I hope he does not do the chip, the original TDA2030 does have some built-in mechanisms to protect from that happening but that's a... Um, maybe it is original from a UTC, maybe it's a no cheap knockoff, I don't know and I don't wanna try so let me put it together, show it working and end the video there. Now it's in standby, you hear nothing from the speaker. But when I turn it on and the consumption is yeah about that. On low ranges it kinda me it kinda lies. It is about 40, but it's alright. When I switch it on, you hear static and a bigger consumption right there. Okay, I had to turn off my lamp there because 
it produces interference, but it works. That's that. Thanks for watching. See you.